Rub up your engines! Sometimes convenience is not worth the price. Sure, it's great. If you got a remote start, you push a button, you're living in Buffalo, start your car in a driveway so it can warm up, the snow just will melt off, it'll be warm inside. But if your car did not come from the factory with one of those remote starting systems on it, please do not attempt to either install one yourself or have some place install it on your car. If you're tempted not to listen to me, just go look at a kit. Go to some electronic store. Look at the kit. You are going to see wires everywhere. Then it has to be connected to your car. They never give you the directions of each specific model. They say generic stuff like this goes to the power wire, this goes to the starter wire, yada yada yada. Start looking at all the wires on the car, especially when you go under the hood and you start messing with all the wiring that's in here. Ah, look at that bundle of wires there. You'll soon discover that hooking one of these kits up is an insanely complex job and one which even for a good mechanic can take hours and hours. I've seen people leave them off Two days later, the guys don't have them hooked up right yet. I have to deal with the other end of the stuff. Somebody puts one in, car is to be towed to me, cause either right away or a few weeks or months later, the car doesn't start or starts running poorly. Your electrical system has various wires that have various amount of power going to them. It's very complicated. It's designed by engineers. Now, if you bought a car and it was built at the factory with one, Okay, yes, it's extremely complicated, but actual engineers designed it for that car, for that wiring system, for that remote that you get when you buy the car new. But these add-on systems, you're patching them into the car. No one really tests them on all different cars. Maybe they work great in a Ford, but you got a Toyota. You don't want to mess with those things, believe me. I had a customer, he wanted one in his car. So he went to one of these car stereo places because they had a big sign, we install remote starting systems for your car. Now yes, this is an extreme case, but I've seen it with my own eyes. They're working on a car, the dash started on fire, burned a whole bunch of the car up. But at least luckily for my customer, the car stereo place was a national chain and they did have insurance. They ended up forking out over $5,000 to fix that fire that they started. And it's rather ironic that although they are a remote starting system for your car, one of the biggest problems they have is when you put one in, some point in time, your car won't start. And I mean it won't start with a remote, then it won't even start with a key sometimes. Because one of the worst things you can do is to put one system on top of another system. Even a simpler thing like a car burglar alarm. I've had customers didn't know that much about cars. And they thought, oh, I'll put a good burglar system on my car. So they buy one of these systems and either they put it on or they pay one of those stereo places to install the alarm system on their car. But they didn't realize the car already had an alarm system from the factory. Almost all cars today come that way. That aftermarket alarm system, on top of the system that was in the car, it went haywire. And unfortunately for them, it worked okay. For months, the battery went dead. They went and got another battery. When they put that battery in, car wouldn't start. And so they towed it over to me and I said, well, you got a problem with your anti-theft system. I said, you got the little clicker for it. Well, they had the little clicker, but that didn't help at all. It happened to be a Nissan. I said, well, where's your uh, remote for turning an alarm off for the Nissan? And they said, oh, I don't know. I bought the car used. I never got one of those. I just used the key and then this system that they put on it. So it turned out, course still had the original Nissan anti-theft system that it had this other system on top of it. You mix those together sometimes when you change the battery the system has to start over. It gets totally confused because it sees that there's this factory alarm system but then there's another system that's patched on top of that. In the case of that one I just disconnected the aftermarket alarm system that was put on, then the car started up fine. But sure if you don't want something stolen great. If you're talking about electronics 
You can't patch one system on top of another system. I even had a customer that had three of them. Had the original one, had an anti-theft system, then it had one of these remote starter systems put on top of it. And man, when that thing broke, whoo, I had to disconnect a whole bunch of stuff just to get it to start. Because when I was a young mechanic, that stuff was easy to do. They had an ignition system with power. The carburetor was mechanical. It just pumped fuel in mechanically. The only thing you had to do was shut off the ignition system and the car wouldn't start. But today, Everything's run by computer, even the starters run by computer, the ignition system, the fuel injection system, and if you start tapping into those wires, even something like an LED that would use just a few milliamps of power is enough to make those things go squirrely at times. And believe me, it's hard enough for even a mechanic like me to fix a factory remote starting system that came with the car. That at least I go to my all data system, I can look stuff up. I can see where the wires go, I can trace it. If somebody has one of these aftermarket systems put on, generally I don't get any information. Especially if the system was made in China. I mean, sometimes the English doesn't even make sense on those things. I've had wiring diagrams from them that made no sense at all. Of course, even worse, if the things were Chinese characters. <laughs> I had no idea what those meant. And if you do have one of these aftermarket systems hooked up and it breaks, a lot of times you're going to find a hard time finding anybody who will even work on it. I'm an open-minded guy, help out my customers, and when I get a pain thing like that, I just say to them, look, this aftermarket system is insanely complicated. I have no idea what they've done to it. You don't have a wiring diagram for it. I just say, look, I know how your original wiring system is. Like I say, I can look that up on my all data. And what I will do is I'll disconnect all the wires that they've hooked up and I will reconnect them all to the factory specifications. They still make cars logically that all the wires are color coded. So if you have a black with a white stripe wire and then there's stuff hooked to it and then further down the line there's another wire hooked to the black with the white stripe on it. You disconnect all the stuff that they added and just splice the black with the white to the black with the white again and that's back to where it started from. And just a general tip for anybody who's planning on putting any add-on electronic accessories to their vehicle, here's my advice. See this big battery? It's got huge wires on it, right? Go through the extra trouble of wiring your new devices directly to your battery with their own wires, with their own fuse systems, and if it's something heavy duty, with its own relay pack too, so it can take that power. Because the plain truth about modern cars is, they're always trying to save money building them. So they're gonna use the smallest gauge wire with the thinnest amount of copper in it that they can. The system is made that it works perfectly fine the way it was designed. Yeah, you know, unless it's a Fiat or something, and then it's even designed wrong. <laughs> but a well-made car, Toyota, Honda, Ford, or something, it's designed with wiring that works perfectly fine, but generally that wiring system is pretty close to its maximum capability the way it was built. And if you start adding more power to those wires, it's a recipe for disaster. Here's an example that wasn't that big of a deal, but it proves my point. I had a customer who wanted to put brighter lights on his Honda. So he went and bought these super bright light bulbs and stuck them in the headlights. And man, they were certainly bright. But one day he came to me and he said, I turned my headlights on the little switch, and after a while that switch starts to get kind of hot. Well, the reason it was getting hot is because those bulbs took so much power that that switch had to send more power through than it originally did. So I told him, hey, if you really like the lights, here's what we can do. We can just run a new switch system for your headlights. We get a nice switch, heavy duty one, 20 amp switch, ran the power directly from the battery to the switch, and then from the switch to a relay, then the relay sent power to the headlights. Now, most people don't want to modify a car like that, so really, <laughs> don't put really brighter headlights in. If your headlight switch is starting to get hot, go back to the other ones. But if you really want them, you can just rewire the whole system because relays can take a lot of power. The power goes from the battery to the relay and sits there. Then when you turn your switch on, that energizes the relay. So the power goes from the battery to the relay and then directly to the headlights. That heavy duty power isn't going through the headlight switch anymore. 
so you don't have to worry about getting hot. When you're dealing with these remote starting systems, they have so many wires that go to so many different places, you'd have to put relays all over the place. And you'd have to have a guy who really understood the wiring of your car because it's too complicated in a modern car with all those tiny little computer wires. You got a remote starter, who knows these days? What's going to happen? With all the electromagnetic interference and wireless devices, somebody might be on their phone messing with something, your car might start up. Who knows? I remember years ago, when I was going to school at the University of Illinois, I had a friend who lives out in the country in Ivesdale, and they found out that when they got on their CB radio at a certain frequency, it would open this guy's automatic garage opener. So when people got drunk, they'd put their CB radios on, and they'd open up his garage just for a laugh. And now this is an extreme example, but just a short time ago, a guy was killed. He was from New York City, he was 21 years old. He was killed by a remote starting system. Had it in his Lexus, it was an aftermarket one that was put in, it wasn't a factory one, it was an aftermarket one. And he was standing between the guy's car and another car walking out of the street. The guy with the Lexus pushed his remote starter, the car started and somehow drove into him. And it was crushing his leg. People tried to push it out, but it kept pushing it in. The guy ended up dying. So, I mean, that's no laughing matter. The aftermarket remote system killed somebody. So, if you're thinking about putting one of these aftermarket remote starting systems in your car, please, listen to Scotty. Don't do it. Who knows? You might even save someone's life. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.